Hello, hello. This is Johannes Watery from Hold to Run. Today we will deploy Ktor and MongoDB with Docker into our Linux host server. And uh, we're gonna I'm gonna go through how I managed to get this running on Ktor application what do what I needed in the build cradle what, how I uh, specified the docker file application conf file and uh, we're gonna be deploying this combination of Gator and MongoDB and docker through docker compose file which is gonna ensure that uh, this runs in correct order and uh, we'll get the uh, correct uh, development environment such as the platforms in here, ports, etc. And on, on my machine I'll be running Apple M series uh, uh, MacBook Pro so I have to be very specific that the, this application regarding the Docker has to be on platform Linux and D64 because that's what my Linux server actually is. So many things to uh, cover in here. And besides that, I use the uh, Docker test desktop on my computer so we can see the uh, generated images and we upload them into my Docker hub at least the main application and from here we can then pull this image into my server and establish that through the docker compose file in there so before we start you can go into hold to run dot com and in here you can see the application that I'm developing currently and in this demo we're gonna use the server doc application which is API testing application to for REST API and file transfer we're gonna use this to prove that we can actually send and receive files and send and receive API responses with our dockerized backend solution Okay, let's start. Okay, let's start by going through what we have to establish in our main application for the Gator for this to work. So, of course, this is going to be based on Docker. We have to create a Docker file. So, on the root of your application, just create new file and name it as a docker file. In here you have to give the basic information such as the uh, in what environment is gonna be running from OpenJDK 11. You have to expose the ports that uh, where how this is gonna be running in the container so it can communicate from the container into the host and into other uh, containers also and these are directly copied from uh, Ktor uh, um, web page and the uh, only thing that I fixed in here is besides saying star.jar change this into star all dot jar so it can actually find what we are building as a shadow or fat jar into the lips otherwise I pumped into an error that it's not gonna find the content so it has to be all dot jar in here to copy successfully okay the docker file in this point doesn't need any anything else 
just give your application name in here so you can identify it logically. So my application name is how to run main.jar. Okay. So that's all you have to do for the Docker file. In the uh, application.conf file, application.conf file, you can find it also from the root resources of your KTOR project. In here, you have to also tell the deployment port whether or not you are about to run this in, in the container or directly into deploy a jar file in the host itself, you always already should have this port correctly in here. So I'm obviously always using 8080. The same specifications in the Docker file as in the conf file. Okay, nothing else to do in the application.conf. So let's see our build cradle. So in here, of course, my application to save anything into a database has to have uh, MongoDB. So the implementation for the dependencies are org.litoad.kmongo, kmongo, and the latest versions, and same for the uh, kmongo coroutine. So this is, these are the dependencies for MongoDB that the Ktor will need, as this is going to be saving data into MongoDB. And our version of the uh, MongoDB is in here, 4.8.0. Okay, so that's for the uh, database dependencies. Besides that, we do have to uh, be able to uh, bundle up either shadow jar or fat jar. To me, they seem to do the same thing. So I have set up task as for shadow jar and uh, manifest attributes in here to work. And to be sure, I'm also referencing the ktor and fat jar. And I'm giving this a all.jar name and my application in here. So the version is just me keeping up the, uh, the bundle name so that uh, if I increment, so it will to increment. So that's logical to me. You can decide the naming in here as you want to. Okay, uh, you're going to see how this bundles up when we generate the, uh, the fat jar in the terminal pretty soon. So nothing else required in the build cradle to work. These are additional options that I have not yet tested thoroughly, but uh, these were mentioned in the Ktor web page. So you can further specify Ktor functions for the uh, Docker if you wish. Okay. Then we have our docker compose. So this is the main file that we're actually going to be using to deploy the images and containers. So in here, I want to use the latest docker compose version 3.9. As far as I understand, that should be the latest. Okay, then we have to establish two services. So first, you have to write services. Then the first service name will be MongoDB. So MongoDB will be a container which is running the MongoDB application database. I'll define the image to the Mongo latest. This is going to be there. If you don't have this already pulled in, in your uh, server, this will automatically pull it from the Docker so Docker is actually offering a official Mongo image on, on their web page. And with the latest, with the tag of latest, you always get the latest version. So this will keep it updated as far as I understand. So 
image mongo latest so this might concern you or might not i'm like i told you i'm running apple m series computer so if i generate anything with this i have to be very specific that this is gonna be meant to be run on a linux server not on macbook m device so i have to give it a platform in here for this image to be able to run on on my actual server i'm defining that this should always restart whether or not i reboot the server i want this service to restart you can define a couple of attributes in here i'm using always might be more wise to use uh, reboot if not stopped for instance okay then we'll give this uh, a service container name so i want to be able to recognize that hey this is the actual container that was generated when we established this service through the docker compose so i don't want to have any random uh, uh, container names generated by the docker so give it a name it's wise then you have to give it the port, expose the ports. So many times you might have already heard that Docker uh, uh, MongoDB is as a default running at 27017. So my application works fine with these ones. And then we mount the volume for the database. So I'm not too familiar yet on, on how Docker manages the the volumes or how it manages to keep the persisting data but this is supposed to be the default way to establish volumes correctly so I definitely want my container uh, based database to have persistent data whether or not I update or remove delete or whatever uh, with the container and later on continue with another database of mongodb of course so mount your volume in here then we have to establish our actual application service for this uh, backend service to run on so this is going to be the the mongodb image and container service which is going to be automatically set up with our docker compose and then we repeat the specification for our gator application so this remember this is the name you're going to be giving it so this is my service name you can give it any name i'm giving it a gator in here so first i'm going to define that build this image of the whole package if it doesn't yet exist so just a dot in there and it's going to build everything in here when we run this on the terminal pretty soon and then i will give an image name now here is something to consider you can give a random name but that name has to be a if you want to upload it push it into your docker hub later on as i want to do in here this is one of my repositories private repository your image name has to be exactly what will be your repository name otherwise you won't be able to push it and pull it back into your server later on so design i mean define the name correctly if you intend to use the docker hub as i do this is just a version tag that's gonna tell how you iterate on the revisions so i'm on 0.2.8 you can come up with your own revisions but this is pretty important for your application because this is not something docker can offer you they can only offer you an a hub to get always the mongol version with the latest so this is something that uh, 
you have to also keep it like that but you don't have to upkeep and docker hub for that one okay again platform is going to be based on the linux not on the m series mac computer in locally okay again restart always and i'll give it a hold to run main container name so i can identify it and my application ports to be used so they have to be again similar as in here in our docker file expose 8080 8080 and in the application conf that's where my application will run on those ports and we have to give environments somebody could tell me if they know better if these are actually mandatory anymore because we already defined most of these in the application.conf file and the docker file so might not be necessary with the ktor project anymore to define the port in here but just to be sure i do it so and also might not be mandatory to specify the mongodb host in here or the uri in here or the db name in here because i'll tell you why none of these works alone i've tested it on with this there there was a place that you have to define in the actual application so that your application cannot knows where to connect in because it, there's going to be two containers communicating your application container is going to be communicating to the mongodb container and i was never able to get it work with just these now look here it, while you're creating your in your actual application the uh, the mongo client i'm using coin module in here so i'm establishing in the coin module the kmongo create client and client connection so i didn't pass anything in here so that was my fault i mean i wasn't able to connect into the mongodb because when we start looking in here it's actually always going to be pointing into the uh, local host mongodb not into the container based mongodb that we're actually trying to do and to be specific you cannot be having two mongodbs running on the, on with the same ports anymore so my goal is to stop using the local host mongodb and the local host based ktor application and dockerize those from here on so check your ktor application in a point where you are actually creating your mongodb application client and in here give the correct mongodb Mon mongodb and port numbers instead of the default mongodb at local host otherwise 100 guaranteed it will not work your docker containers will not connect them only thing you get is it's gonna be socket exception error while connecting okay i used a lot of time to figure this out now you might get a shortcut in here so back to the uh, compose let's keep these in here just to be sure this might not be mandatory anymore okay then we have to tell that this application uh, and docker image service container whole bunch of the package it will surely depend on the mongodb because alone this cannot do anything so the mongodb name has to be put in here depends on the mongodb okay and from the internet world i was able to dig up that we have to be able to uh, put last 
lastly but not least the volumes and MongoDB in here. This is gonna establish the volume at somehow. Again, I, I don't know anything too much at this point except that it works. I'm not specialist in dockerizing. Just about to migrate my project into docker. Okay, so next let's build our cradle fat jar and uh, see the outcome. So I have already my terminal open and I am in my project directory where this is. So this is the integrated terminal of the uh, IntelliJ IDE. So let's build the fat jar. So now we should have the uh, package generated into our lips folder. Let's give it a second. Okay, here. In here, as you can see, I mentioned name your docker file all.jar because this is the one that we have to use actually and uh, in many scripts I've seen that uh, these this specific part is written as in here and it will not work okay so now we want to uh, run our docker compose for this application and it should generate us two images in here in our docker desktop this we can visualize the outcome so it's gonna pull the default mongo latest image and it's gonna build us the uh, our application through the uh, docker compose as we have specified in here so let's write docker compose up okay it's gonna take a little while so it is giving a warning because our build environment and run environment are wrong as you can see my computer is n series macbook and uh, running these simply won't work we're, we're gonna get an error in here it doesn't matter because this is not the environment we want to run these so let's go in here and now we can see that uh, Oh, we generated two versions of our main. Probably it also pulled an image. So let's delete this one. Yeah, we don't want to use this one, which is generated. Oh, sorry, pulled. We want to use that one, which, which was freshly built. Okay, now we have one Mongo pulled from Docker Hub and uh, our built version of docker uh, ktor application and in the containers we can see that we have now two containers that we named in here let's double check the names for the mongodb mongodb container yep mongodb container and we have how to run main container how to run main container okay successfully and the ports are correct and uh, we get a warning that hey this is for Linux A and D version and we're trying to run it in a MacBook M series computer so let's stop these we don't want to run these in here the last thing before we jump into our Linux server is now that we will upload our application image into our docker hub so let's do that before 
the next step. So this is something we just generated one minute ago. And with the uh, Docker te desktop, we can use this to push it into the hub. This is our custom image we needed. So let's ensure it'll get pushed into my hub. Should have incremented this by one at this point. So I can be sure that I'm using the latest one, but never mind. Okay, it should be done. Yeah, it is done. So let's double check that we have a fresh push in here. Okay, a few minutes ago. And now we can reach this from our server. Okay, let's jump into the server side. Okay, so now this command prompt is not anymore in my local computer. So I have opened a connection into my server. So before all of this behind here was done on my uh, MacBook computer, but now we have to uh, start working on the actual server. So first, we I I know that this is how I was able to deploy the uh, Docker Compose through the server. So I know that that uh, I had to recreate this Docker Compose file into the root of my server. So in here, you can just on the root of your server, make dir and give a file name. I don't know what you give, sorry, folder name, come up with the folder name, maybe docker compose, make your docker compose. So I already have that created. So I can just go in to docker compose pose folder like so and in here we have created a file so on the Linux you can just say if you want to create a file touch and then you have to give it a docker compose dot yml file name so docker compose dot yml that's how you create a docker compose file like so okay we already have it in our folder so i'm not gonna recreate that file and now we have to open this file and write all this content in that file so through nano and docker compose dot y and l so this is the uh, text editor in linux and as you can see i have just handwritten all that content as also in my project in here so this is not high tech text editor so you have to be very specific with the docker compose file intendations so otherwise it won't run when we're gonna run this on our server so i had to manually put always two spaces in here and then again hit the spaces and not all intendations as you can see will be similar such as on the ports and uh, port numbers in here the, this kind of intendation works on the uh, actual code editor but in this editor i had to uh, run this like 10 times and fix the indentations because i always seem to have a a an error on certain line number it's going to tell you if you have wrong indentation or too many spaces or whatever on whatever line so i believe you're gonna be cleaning this up until it's in acceptable format. So you have to handwrite this file 
in here. Okay, I have al already done that, so I can exit from here. Not gonna save that. So now we want to run that file. Okay, so let's run our docker compose.yml file. Just before this, for myself, as this is gonna be a production app, I did increment this into 0 0.2.9 and I did update the latest version into my docker hub. So if you see another version, that's why. So I did it for myself, okay? So now we are in our root and in docker compose folder and in here we have our docker compose file and we can quickly check the content i also had to update my latest version in here okay i did put that in here into the image name okay those are the versions of my actual application that I want to use. So let's exit that one. And now docker compose up. We are in the folder where the docker compose.yml file is. So if you don't yet have the image, this will actually now download those images as you wanted them, specified them from the docker hub and also your personal project with the actual repository name and with the latest version. If you don't have them, this will download and build them and run the containers. So I know I already have those images in here. So this probably will just use them and run the containers. Okay, now we have our application running and the order was correct so we first initiated the mongodb container and then we proceeded into the uh, main application and we don't ha seem to have any errors in here so this will be now a good time to test our application Okay, so now let's test our Docker con container-based application and MongoDB with a couple of our REST API cores and file transfers. So first, I want to ensure that uh, we have the correct images. So we are using the correct ones, Alter and Main 0 0.2.9 and Mongo latest okay let's ensure our containers are actually running in here docker ps so this will list all running containers okay so they are correctly running in here and we even have the name names that we specified for these containers in the docker compose what yml file okay so they should be able to receive whatever we send from here into our back end and the the port configurations are nicely in place so let's give it a try so i know i do have a back end that can receive uh, an object for report counts so let's pass in value of a thousand in here so that's an object with a value of a thousand i want to pass into my backend and then we should be able to receive that back so let's send okay we had a response of success we can detect that the content in here correct 
Okay. And I would like to update the data, get back the data object with current values from the Mongo database. So everything I send in here is going to first go into my application container, and that's going to be communicating directly with the MongoDB container. So, okay, I believe we are now querying wrong ID. Let's double check the ID that we want. So it was body and a body, not body X. So, and the value of thousands should come back to us. So let's update what we want from the back end. So here, now we should get the correct value of 1000. So let's get, okay, correctly. The MongoDB was able to obviously communicate through the Docker containers into my application and it is running nicely. Now a bit more difficult, we can, we should upload a file into my application, which then will save that within the container root system. And then we query that back. So let's choose some file. Is this get? Okay, this is get. I want to post a file. So let's assign a file in here. Let's ensure that that is a file that I have in here. Okay, let's use that image. Now we have an image of file with some long name. Okay, let's post. And nicely it went there. And now I should be able to query back the same file with the file name. So I'm just gonna get that file name from somewhere from here. There, I want to um, get that file name as a parameter. Okay, I hope the copy works on this emulator. And now let's try to query back that file name. Let's give this a my image and then we're going to pass in file name parameter of shots should be that. Okay. Now we should be able to receive that from our application. So get file. Okay. And it downloaded nicely, pretty fast. And let's ensure our folder system actually has that file. So now library server dog downloads and there it is. That's the image. Okay, guys, obviously this migration is a success. I was able to uh, establish these images and uh, this project directly into a Docker uh, based application into my server, which is really nice. Now there are some freedoms that I do next. For instance, I want to update the my Ubuntu into the latest LTS version. Before this Docker, I had a issue, I updated, but I noted MongoDB running on my host machine and not inside the Docker didn't support the latest LTS version and crashed. So this is kind of a benefit I should be able to now handle without issues because the MongoDB it's not tangled into my host machine system too hard anymore. So that's the last test and I'll hope it is a success. We'll be back.